Okay, so as you're looking at your photo painting options, you've just watched the video with the color replacement tool. That's a really great tool uh, in, photo, in Photoshop and in Pixlr that you have access to. The nice thing about that <clears throat> is that using the color replacement tool actually just paints over the image and you don't have to worry about the layering that you would normally see by just using the brush tool. Okay, if you notice the brush tool right here, and the color replacement tool are very similar in their look, but the color replacement tool has the little square with the arrows above. I want to show you what the brush tool is going to do because you have a couple of options when you're painting. If you just use the brush tool, if I select that and then I click on a color down in my color palette, okay, I'm going to go to the web. It'll start you on HSL. Let's go over to the web colors and we'll pick something here on the web. I think I picked, you know, this has a little bit of a light blue. But let's say I pick, um, you know, something a little bit lighter, like somewhere in there. Once I select a color and click OK, you're going to see that my color palette, it's going to show me with this primary color what I'm painting with. But the nice part is that it's also going to show you the previous colors that you used. Would you want to go back to one of the colors that you wouldn't have to go back in and select it again? It's going to keep a little record of the colors that you're using. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're going to now just take the regular brush tool and I want to show you some of the features. As soon as I click on the brush tool, all of the options that I have for my brushes are up here in my options window. Okay, if I were to go in and paint, this is a rather small brush, so if I wanted to change the brush size, I would click on brush and I can either go in and select one of these larger options or I can just go into the diameter and take the slider and make something even quite larger than what I'm seeing here. Okay, so let's say I'm going somewhere around 200. Okay, and I'm going to click on my image. Okay, this is what the normal brush tool is going to do. All right, it's giving me a nice scattered image, but it's because my opacity is at 92 that's why it's completely covering over. It'll co cover over the paint in the paint chips. And that's not what I want. I want to show the detail of the doorway um, underneath the paint. So I'm going to go back either in my history palette. Okay, I can go back. Or I can go to my edit undo button to get myself back to where I want to be. Now, the other thing I want to point out just before you get started is look that I'm, I'm working in a new layer. Okay, I had my background layer. And then I went in and I created a new layer. And by doing that, or how to do that, I went from layer, new layer, okay? And I know I'm going to be painting on top of this layer, so I'm not actually affecting the original image underneath. So if I do want to use my brush tool, I definitely have to go in and change my opacity. So I'm going to bring that way down, and then I'm going to kind of see what that's going to do. That's quite a bit better. But the downside with the brush tool is that any area that I overlap, it's, it's almost like using paint. It, the paint will become darker. Okay, so I've gone over that area once. If I go over it again, you can see that this area is now quite a bit darker. So just like regular paint, the more you cover it, the darker the paint is going to be. Okay, so this is why sometimes the color replacement tool can be a better option for you. I'm going to go back in. I want to show you one other option, and that option is the uh, the paint bucket that you're going to see right underneath the paint tool right here, the paint bucket um, tool. Now with the paint bucket tool we actually need to go in and create a duplicate layer instead of working on this layer. When we're working on this layer there's nothing in that layer. Okay, Basically it's like we're just putting a piece of acetate on top of the background and we're painting on top of that that piece of acetate when we create a layer. As you can see right here this checkered pattern means that the layer is empty okay this is the layer that has the image in it so if I want to actually use the paint bucket this is a this is another option besides the color replacement tool and the regular paintbrush tool and um, now your third option is the paint bucket so I just want to show you some of the features available in Pixlr and you can choose what what would work best for you um, but I want to go in and create a duplicate layer so I'm in the background I have to click on the background because that's the layer I want to duplicate because that's the layer that has the image in it. So I'm going to go layer, now duplicate layer. Okay, because what this is going to do is I have to actually take pieces of that layer and test them um, to see where I want to where I want to paint. So I have my regular layer that I started with. Now I have my background copy. There's nothing in this top layer, so I could really just get rid of that if I wanted to. I'm just going to delete that layer so it's not confusing. So now I'm working in a background layer, which means I have the image in there. If I take the paint bucket tool, 
we're going to start talking about tolerance. Tolerance and opacity. Opacity is how heavy the paint is going to lay on to the image. Okay, if we want it opaque, then if we want it to completely color the image, we don't want that. We want to see the details of the, of the doorway coming through. Tolerance, on the other hand, is where I can select only certain parts of the image that I'd like to paint. Okay, so this is a very low tolerance. I'm at 15. So if I take this paint bucket and I choose this uh, blue color, and let's say I select right in here, as you can see at that tolerance, it's only going to paint those particular pixels that are within that tolerance from where I actually selected when I, when I clicked the mouse um, with the paint bucket. Now, when I have this, I still have a lot of options. If it feels too heavy, which it definitely is, I'm in that layer, I can still go in and change the opacity, okay? So anything you do in Pixlr can always be adjusted. I can fade that paint as much as I want to, or I can make it as opaque as I want. It's, it's a little too neon for me, okay? So I still have that option. If I decide that I wanted to paint the entire doorway and not just that section, okay, you, you could see how this could be used if I wanted to go in and find a different color and then paint so that the door had a lot of different colors that were sort of blending in, which would look very nice. But if I decide I want to paint the entire doorway this color, this tolerance isn't nearly as high as it should be. So I'm going to go back in. I'm going to go to my previous step on my history tool. Or remember, I could hit my undo button to get me back there. And now I'm going to select a higher tolerance. I'm going to go up somewhere in, let's try 84 in the 80s and I just want to show you the difference if I were to paint and now hit the photo bucket okay now the tolerance is so much greater that it selected most of the image for me and again it's still a little heavy I would go in and definitely bring that down okay but you can really change the feel that's actually very nice right in there it gives us a little blue color um, the details still coming through because it's rather opaque and I can always see before and after by just selecting this little checker box in the layer I'm in my background layer. This is where I've painted in. If I uncheck that, it shows me my original. Okay, So I can always have a preview from where I started to how far I've come in my particular step. Okay, and the last option I want to show you is how to use the desaturation tool. Okay, I have an image behind this doorway that I'm going to access. Um, this is an image that I know if I wanted to paint, I could use the color replacement tool. Okay, let's say I wanted to go in and paint um, her shirt a little different color. Okay, I could go in and actually paint right over her shirt with the color replacement tool, and it's just going to replace that kind of cream with, um, with whatever color I choose. This is a very dark image, so chances are when I paint this, you're not really going to see some drastic changes. So another option for you when you're creating this photo painting is we're going to actually go in and create a duplicate layer. Oops, I'm in the wrong one. Layer, okay, duplicate layer. All right, and now, so we're working in this duplicate layer, layer now because we don't want to work on the original. Now I'm going to go to my adjustment and I'm going to desaturate the entire image. I'm going to take the color away. Okay, you could. this could be an option that you choose as well. If you want to desaturate your image and then go in and paint specific pieces like you saw in one of the examples, I think the mushroom example um, in your um, information, now I can use my paint bucket or the brush tool to go in probably the paint bucket it seems to it fills the spaces a little bit better um, let's see I have an opacity of 71 let's say I want to go in and just make you know the windows blue okay if I go in my tolerance is about 46 let's start a little lower and chances are because there's such high contrast between the window and the wall it's not going to pick up the wall anyway okay so if I go in and paint now you see it's picked up a little bit outside of the window so that's not what I want I just want the inside of the window okay I'm gonna take that tolerance down even more okay let's start up here all right and anytime I click the paint bucket it's going to fill in okay those particular areas and again it's gonna make them just as dark as if I were to be applying layers of paint and again, I can still go in, kind of bring the opacity down. All right, that needs a little work in the top corner here because I'm not, I'm not grabbing those little areas. I could go back in with the paintbrush and actually cover that over. Okay, but this is another option for you. Okay, and that'll kind of smooth it out. All right, bring my opacity down even more. 
And again, what should I be doing? I really should be working a little more closely in on the image as opposed to being kind of far out here. But that paintbrush tool, after using the paint bucket, you could use that to go in and kind of refine your areas. All right, so that's another way you can, you know, completely colorize the image um, is by going in and actually desaturating. Okay, let's go back in there again. There we go. Okay. Um, working in that layer, now I've created a black and white image where I'm adding little hints of color to draw attention or emphasize particular areas. Okay. If you choose this option, I'd like you to paint in quite a bit. I don't want you to just choose one or two things. That's not really giving you the, the experience that you need. I'd like to see you paint in the amount of detail um, that you know, you're gonna, you're going to learn how to use these tools. Um, so what you want to do with this assignment, just the assi assignment objectives, just look at those again. You want to make sure you're going with a particular theme. Do you want to go with a pastel theme? Do you want to try to give it a little bit of an unrealistic look as if this were happening, uh, you know, maybe somewhere on, let's say, another planet, okay? And you want to give it some unrealistic colors or things to, to take us out of our comfort zone. You have to think about what would be the best option for your image, and that's what I want you to go with with your photo painting vision. Look at your subject matter. What would be appropriate? Okay, what's your vision for this particular image? You're almost creating your own version. You have the original image, but you're creating your own version of that image by painting in new colors. Okay, and you have these options, the color replacement tool, the brush tool, the photo bucket tool, um, and then this desaturation of the entire image and then going back in and painting. Okay, watch your layers. Make sure you have that duplicate layer in. If your paint is not, if you can't see your paint, uh, make sure you're in your background layer and not just an empty new layer. Okay, so if you have any questions, let me know and good luck with the assignment.